Hello friends, welcome to another vlog. Um, it's Friday, I am on my lunch break, so I am sewing because I'm working from home today. We're working on Lady Watson, who is here currently, and she needs some cuffs. So I started drawing out these cuffs, um, which I am using from a different Truly Victorian pattern, and I thought I would show you what I'm doing to make this happen. Okay, so here's the original pattern. Um, this one's from TV428. I really like these cuffs. I use them on Iron Man. Let's go over here and look at Iron Man. This is what these cuffs look like. They're super cute. I love them. So I thought I would use them for this also because the cuffs that come on them are super boring. So I just traced out this pattern. Um, and then I'm just gonna shave a little bit off of each side because it just needs to be a smidge smaller. Um, I wrote where it came from, what to do, and what it's, you know, recut for, and marked, of course, the grain line and anything I needed, which were the buttons. So I'm just gonna um, par this down a little bit and cut it out, and then cut out my cuffs and get those created so that I can make these sleeves into a fully formed thing, which will be very excited because once they're fully formed, they can go on Lady Watson, and that will make me extremely happy. And we have a pattern. So that's exciting. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this out of brown silk for the lining and then Bernadette's fabric, which is, as a reminder, this fabric for the cuff itself. Um, so that should be cute. I don't know if I'm going to put the sleeves in right away because I want to definitely try this on now that the lining's in, one time before I put the sleeves in, because I still have an opportunity to take it out, like flip it back inside out and take out some of the side seams if it's not quite big enough. So I'm like really nervous because it fits exactly. And that's terrifying to me. So I might wait until my husband gets home for that, but I'm gonna make these cuffs and I'm gonna make the sleeves happen before he gets here. So that should work out. So the thought has just occurred to me about Bernadette's fabric that it doesn't corner very well. Like, what I mean by that is there's these corners here that it has to be able to turn fairly sharply on and I need to recut that clearly. Um, but if I come over here, like specifically like there and kind of there, it doesn't really corner very well. I'm wondering if I should do the cuffs out of this and this with this being on the outside and this being on the inside. <sighs> Maybe I'll do that. I, I like the idea of doing these as the cuffs too, but I don't know. Oi. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I have two cuffs and two linings that are both zigzagged for my sanity because I can't deal with them unraveling. <laughs> I'm feeling I will have to cut this down when I turn it, but for now, that's okay. I had a couple of the points like pop through when I was pulling out and turning the tails for the swallowtail and that you should have heard my gasp. I was just like, because <laughs> I have to flip it back inside out, re-sew it, blah, blah, blah. So that was lame. Um, and this collar is already doing crazy crap. Like, no one will notice but me, but let's just have a look at Noel's OCD. So like, what is this right here? What is this? There's like a black loop that's coming out and then also yellow ones are popping out and they're just like, I don't even know, they're just like unraveling somehow, this fabric though. I can see how it'd be great for a skirt, but not super great for like small things, like this is too loosely wo woven fabric for that. Anyway, I'm gonna give it a go. I don't plan on being super hard on this, so it is what it is. And I have to cover it all with ribbon later, that's fine, I'll do that. But here we are. Progress is going to be made. All progress is good progress. Okay, so I have to make somehow four loops. So one, two, three, four, and then make sure that I make two cuffs and not one cuff twice. It's like sleeves. You gotta make two sleeves and not one sleeve twice. 
So I'm gonna go work on that, make these loops and get them sewn together so that I can turn them and then pop them into the sleeve and the second that happens I can sew the cuff edge and then we will have fully formed sleeves. Woo woo, woo woo. Okay, I have one cuff fully formed and another one underway. I wanted to mention this as um, a note that I am always wrong about my, what are they called, sleeves and also now my cuffs. So <laughs> I always think like how I have them laid here, that this sleeve lining goes with this sleeve because it bends the same way. That's not actually true. This sleeve lining goes with this sleeve. <laughs> They should be like this, where they're opposites, because the outside is out on the outer sleeve, and the outside is in on the inner sleeve, so you actually need the sleeve to be the backwards one of the one it feels like it should be. And I mess that up every time I make sleeves, so it just happened with the cuff, where I was like, why doesn't this line up? And I'm like, oh, right, because the outside is out, but the inside is in, so you actually need the opposite one of the one that matches it exactly. Anyway, so, um, learned a lesson there again, a lesson I will never actually learn, so, um, yeah, I'm gonna put this cuff in together, and then I'm gonna make some little buttons and put them on here so that those are fully formed. I guess I could do that after. I mean, it says decorate them now, but I'm like, why do I need to do that? I guess maybe I won't. I don't know. I think I was gonna maybe do the cream buttons here. Um, I'm not sure. Also considering putting some buttons like here and here, like big ones. Cause I always think that that's super cute when there's like buttons in here, in this like weird little fold area that never quite unwrinkles right. Um, anyway, we'll see, we'll see what I do. Here's another pro tip. Put the fabric that sews the crappiest on the top. So like this silk, you know, poly silk, whatever, sews pretty well, like super smoothly and super nicely. So I'm putting it on the inside so that the feed dogs move this fabric and so they don't try to move this fabric because if the feed dogs have to like pick up and move this fabric, they get like caught in the fibers because this is loosely woven and it's wool. Um, so they want to eat this fabric. So I'm making sure that the cuff lining is on the inside when I sew it because it's the easier fabric to sew. Because when you're doing stuff like this, it doesn't actually matter which one you put on the inside and the outside because you're going to turn it anyway and then you'll figure out which side's the outside like while you're sewing it it doesn't matter which side's on top always put the one that is like the the most smooth to sew and easiest for the feed dogs to like move along towards the feed dogs and the other one can be on the needle side i have a fully formed sleeve i'm super excited it has a very porgish lining it's all together, it's real. It feels like there's a lot of fabric in there because there's a lining and for some reason it feels like a lot, but that's okay. I need to do the other one, <laughs> obviously. Uh, I'm about to run out of thread again, even though I bought two. So I'm gonna go back and get another one because I still need to do some work on the skirt, like trimming the skirt and stuff. So I have a feeling that yeah, I'm going to need more thread, so I'm going to go get a couple more of those. So I will be right back. Woo woo, we have two sleeves and they're ready to go in. And I'm so excited. Um, I got more thread. I got chest shields. These are like um, maxi pads for your armpits, basically. <laughs> um, six individually wrapped pairs. Okay, so there's six pairs in here, so that leaves me through like most of my costumes so these are great to like you know avoid sweat stains or anything like that especially if you're gonna be wearing your costumes in the summer you can get like more robust ones than this but these are good for just like slapping them in I got some Fabri-Tac in case mine is dried up for making buttons because I do pop just a tiny bit of glue in there so that they don't come apart um my husband isn't home yet so I think I'm gonna go answer comments from you guys on my latest vlog. I don't have to fixate on this, I can fixate on me. Um, I think I'm gonna go do comments um, from my latest vlog. Um, you guys are hysterical and awesome and 
<laughs> I love the comments section. <coughs> Every time I think, and I say like, oh, someone's gonna nag at me about blah, blah, blah. Like, you guys are like, nah, I do it too. Which, man, I love that. It's like, this community is awesome. Um, yeah, so I'm just gonna wait for my husband to get home and then I'm gonna put on this bodice one last time. Um, before I put in buttons and before I put the sleeves in because I want to make sure it fits with the lining in because I tried it on without the lining and it was fine but then there's a lining and a bunch of boning in there now and I don't know if it's fine because like all that stuff takes up space right like boning isn't free I mean it, it's also not free but <laughs> um, it takes up space and with the uh, very limited like there's I, I, I fit in there like a little sausage so we're gonna find out <laughs> okay I'll let you know what happens with that so I'm making these little fabric co co covered hi I can use words covered buttons <laughs> um, out of the brown fabric and I thought I would show you guys what that process looks like um, they're not they're very tidy they're not as period authentic as <laughs> uh, you know they maybe have this kind of thing but so you get this little kit and it comes with these guys and then a bunch of these guys and then this circle you cut out the back so I cut out my fabric and I cut it out slightly bigger than the circle because I find that the circle is exact and that's a little more exact than I want so I make a little divot like with my finger to just so you can kind of see it circle there you put this guy in there and then you take this and you just push it in so it goes in that little hole and then you stuff all this stuff in there um, this is where I do the thing where I add a little blob of glue you don't have to it'll work without it but just to make sure nothing comes apart on your costume I plop glue in there and I use Fabri-Tac um, and then you put the back on and you take this thing and you push it down again and I push it super hard so it's all in there and like joined up together and then you pop it out and you have a little fabric color covered button I let these dry so that it's like super good and uh, I'm not making 20 of these yet I think I only have 14 which means I have to go back to Joanne which dude <laughs> I'm tired of going to Joanne but I'm gonna cover as many of these as I can um, I actually don't know how many I fully need because I don't know if 20 is an accurate account count or not but I'm gonna cover the ones that I have for now um, just because I'm killing time and I might as well get something productive done how unusual for me to get something done rather than go lay down <laughs> I might as well ride this wave while I can okay all right so it does fit fits well I like the snugness of it. Um, squishes all of my chub down. <laughs> um, happy about that. I can't see what's going on back here, so let me do this. Swallowtail is cute, will be cuter when it's held up on a bustle. How do I even get this angle? Okay, <laughs> see, it will be even cuter when it's held up on a bustle. Back looks good. Feeling solid. Okay, so ready to put the sleeves in basically is what I'm saying. I'm gonna eat first. Sleeves need to be dealt with like on a full stomach is my opinion about that. <laughs> and we have a sleeve. And it is in. And it is good. Um, I need to pick out all the little basting threads that are in here and whatever. But it's in there, it's good. It has a little bit of floof, which means it's Victorian, <laughs> but I minimize the floof down to what I could handle. I'm not a floof girl, so everybody else is into those 1830 sleeves, and I, I actually, like, I think I could buy into that because they're so big they're ridiculous, but yeah, <laughs> I'm not a big, big sleeve girl. I have, um, like, ham arms anyway. Like, the last thing I want to do is, you know, make them worse. <laughs> uh, maybe that would just camouflage them, though. So maybe that maybe that's actually the way a router should go. Maybe I should just wear 1830s and 1890s in my daily life. Anyway, um, I didn't discuss this ahead of time because I just wanted to, like, 
do it. Um, it went in, I, I put it in upside down the first time, but it went in smoothly, and then this one went in smoothly, so I feel like the, the cut of this sleeve is good. And I tried it on, and it looks good, and it fits good, so I need to do a lot of picking out, and then I have to stitch the lining in, um, because they have you overlay the lining. I want to trim down the, the seam allowance a little bit in there, and then, um, stitch the lining down over it. Uh, but I can do that hand sewing stuff when I'm watching TV sometime when I need to do that. Yeah, so I keep um, thinking that I actually just really need to plan my weeks a little bit better with this um, going forward. I don't really know how to do that right now <laughs> because I'm in such like panic. But I think when I go to like regular mode after the trip and I go back to what I would call normal sewing, which will definitely be less intense than this is. Um, <laughs> So, I don't know, maybe the vlogs will slow down a little bit, um, or they'll get shorter. Um, but what I need to do is sew big intense things on the weekend, like put sleeves in and whatever, and then save a bunch of hand sewing and, like, grind kind of stuff for the weekdays, because I can, like, sit in my bed and watch TV and do that, and that's all, like, super mellow and not stressful, and it doesn't make me, like, want to avoid it kind of thing, so, um, I think that's probably a better plan is to save my intense sewing for weekends and days that I have huge chunks of time for that and like brain power. Anyway, it's like 11, so I think I'm going to call it for tonight even with one sleeve in um, because my husband wants to go for a walk and I want to go for a walk and it takes like an hour and I don't want to put another sleeve in at midnight. <laughs> Seems like a bad idea, so we will do that tomorrow. Um, I have a pool party to go to with a bunch of little kids, so that should be fun tomorrow and then I will get cracking on the sewing so anyway see you guys tomorrow hello it's Saturday is that right yeah it's Saturday Saturday pretty late at night I am shiny with shower and wet hair um I went to they're not really my nieces but I'm Auntie Noel um my two besties had their kids really close together so they have a joint birthday party because they're two weeks apart so I went to that today and then I helped clean up and did a bunch of stuff so we were out really like late doing that and then I had like a weird bout of sunsickness like I don't know if you guys get this but like if I go out in the sun too long especially if I'm in water it's like almost like dehydra de dehydration except I was drinking the whole time so anyway I got some of that usually I just need to like eat and rest and chill so I watched the favorite and wow that was something I liked it I thought it was <laughs> very uh witty and amusing um also the costumes like total costume porn Okay, so I have a surprise for you guys because I did something and it is that uh, this lady has sleeves. She's also like <laughs> inappropriately on this thing. Let me get this straightened out and then I will come back and show you her sleeves. Okay, there you go. Yep, she's got them. Um, she's ready to go except buttonholes and I need to do a little stitching inside the lining to do the armholes down and stuff. Other than that, she is a go. Um, I need to do skirt stuff. Um, I think what's going to happen is I'm going to put a button every inch down this. i got to figure out the buttons are on, which side the buttons are on or which side the buttonholes are on. Um, it'd be easier for me if the buttonholes were on the left. I don't know which one that is. I'm going to go find that out. Um, I might mark them tonight and then come in and sew them tomorrow. Uh... I might work on trim stuff for the skirt also, we'll see. I don't know how long it's going to take me to make all those buttonholes and all those buttons, and it might be that um, I make all the buttonholes and then I sew the buttons on over time because buttons, ugh, I don't really want to sit there and sew 22 buttons on at one time, so um, that may be a thing that I do while I'm doing other stuff, so I might move on after I get the skirt trimmed or do it while I'm trimming the skirt or whatever, so... We'll see. Um, yeah, so I'm going to put her around here and maybe clean up just a little bit since I got to a good, like, wow, I'm like, sleep battle is over. Woo woo. Um, this looks like it's pulling, but it's just like how it's sitting. Yeah, so I'm just going to like put her around here and clean up a little bit. Um, I might vacuum. I just want to put some stuff away, get it straightened up because I'm going to have the ja the jacket on the table to mark this um, stuff. I also got to iron this one more time because 
there's still like pin marks in it and stuff so I don't want to do buttonholes with all that stuff in there so I'm gonna take care of some of that tonight and then I'll get back to sewing buttonholes tomorrow and I definitely got to do some practice ones first <laughs> okay so this is the skirt um, I had originally just popped a, a hem in here with my machine um, but I'm gonna actually take this out right now um, just one one folds worth and then I'm gonna iron that out and then I'm going to put the horsehair braid in and how you actually do that um, is that you actually attach it to the front of the skirt and then you flip it to fold it back and it makes the hem for you essentially um, and then sewing that down is where the new stitches for the hem go so the hem's gonna be a little bit higher which is good because I want to add some trim to the bottom and it's already like long enough so I think this is gonna work out perfectly um so I'm gonna go ahead and unpick this and steam it right now since I have the iron on and everything and I did iron my jacket already and also the waistband of the skirt because it was getting a little crazy okay if you'll recall before it was squishy any and I, this is a technical term squishy any and now it stands like pretty much perfectly out <laughs> I just have it like it's sewn on the outside and then I flipped it and then that's just pinned but it holds its shape better in the back and in the front and it's just a little bit of basically here it is on the floor right where it belongs um, it's like nylon mesh I guess it's like braid and stretchy see whoop, whoop. anyway um, so you just sew that on there on the inside of the skirt and it uh, stands itself out much better which I enjoy so I'm pretty pleased with that all right it's pretty late um, maybe I'll I'm gonna start maybe marking this and if I get pooped I'll stop and if I don't I'll mark it and then I'll do buttonholes manana we're all marked um, so I'm ready to do buttonholes tomorrow so I need to like practice some of those um, before I do anything stupid <laughs> and then I find that I do like one or two practices and then I just sort of do it the, the best thing to do is not show it fear so <laughs> Um, it can smell fear and it will take advantage of that so I will make one or two and then I will sit there and do 21 buttonholes straight through all at once I might take a break in the middle but I find like when you're on a roll you should just keep rolling so we'll see how I feel about it tomorrow if I feel awful about it I won't do that I'll just I'll continue trimming the skirt or whatever um, I have a little bit of energy left, so I'm going to make the rest of these buttons. I think I need to make 13 made, so I need to make 21, so I need to make 8 more buttons. So I'll make those buttons um, now so they're ready to go whenever it is that I am ready to sew 21 buttons onto this. I actually have to do 25, because I was going to put 2 on each cuff, so yeah. <laughs> we'll see how that goes. That, I think I'm, that's just gonna be a side project. I think I'm gonna can, I'm gonna start doing other stuff too, so that I stop focusing on this damn jacket. <laughs> like done with this bodice. So it's almost done though, and I'm hoping it'll be to the point where I'm calling it done done enough, which means I have to like sew in the armholes and I have to do the buttons and stuff. That's just hand sewing. Um, once I can get it to that state, then I feel solid about it. So. And I'm going to start doing other stuff on the side, too. Okay, um, that's what I have to say about that. That's what I'm sticking with. And I will see you guys probably tomorrow. I'm just going to make some buttons. So I don't, I don't, I'm not going to check back in, but yeah. Oh, tomorrow I go get my hat. So you guys are going to see my hat tomorrow. I'm really excited about that. My 18th century hat that Lynn made me. I am so excited about that. Um, I have a little goodbye party to go to tomorrow. And other than that, I'm like sewing and doing stuff all day. So hopefully tomorrow will be productive also. Um, this week I have a few things to do. Um, I'm getting a massage one day, that's gonna be awesome. So I'm trying to like line up a bunch of hand sewing and like I need to make a bunch of trim. So pleating and brainless stuff like that is gonna happen this week. I think, at least until I start my Regency thing, like through Coco, probably I have mindless work that should be super easy to do left. So, yay, yay.
I'm excited. And JP Ryan is gonna help me make a Spencer. So I'm very excited about that. Um, those of you who haven't tried her patterns, oh, I have one out. That 18th century gown I made is a JP Ryan pattern. So the woman who made this pattern I use is going to teach me how to make a Spencer. So I'm super pumped about that. And she will help me with fitting. So I'm also super pumped about that. Yay. Oh yeah, so I've been reading Emma, and by reading I mean listening to. And for the last like literally half an hour I've been screaming, Jane Fairfax is pregnant, you idiot! <laughs> On the phone. So, yeah. I'm assuming Jane Fairfax is pregnant. I should watch this movie. I think it's Gwyneth Paltrow in it though. I don't know how I feel about her. I'm worried out by her goop stuff. I don't know. Anyway, the movie's probably good, so I'll watch that too. But yeah. And we have 21 buttonholes. Check that out. So you guys may notice that whenever I'm like super freaked out about doing something, I just do it. And I don't film about it beforehand, and I try not to whine about it beforehand, because I can procrastinate all day. I'm so, so good at procrastinating. So I have learned to just not come on here and tell you guys I'm about to put in my sleeves, blah, 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 fear, scaredness, sadness, pain, mostly fear. I just do it. Uh, and the buttonholes were also nerve-wracking, um, largely because if you screw those up, they're right in the front, <laughs> and they're, it's silk, and it's like shreddy silk, so if you mess it up, it's like really a pain to pick out, and it's hard to like reset. I had to reset one or two in, um, Iron Man, like pull the entire buttonhole out and redo it. Oof. Luckily you can't really see it, but oi, oi. I have to say... These sleeves and this but these buttonholes went in super easy. Like I set this sleeve in upside down one time, and that was my own stupidity. So I don't even blame the sleeve. This guy went in like a dream. Um, and these buttonholes had one issue at one point, like somewhere in this area. I started down here. Uh, always start at the bottom. That's another thing. If you screw these up, they're not less noticeable than these. Um, pro tip. Anyway, there was some screw up around here where it like didn't finish the buttonhole and I couldn't figure out what was wrong. So I just sort of manually finished it and then I reset, like I turned off my sewing machine, turned it back on and I did another sample and everything was fine. So I just hauled ass to the finish line. So that's awesome. So now everything else is hand sewing. So I have to put on buttons. Yep. And I have to sew the lining of the hole and like trim down the seam allowance in the sleeves and I have to pick out all this like basting thread so that's all hand sewing everything on the skirt is also hand sewing so I'm not actually gonna sew the horsehair in yet because I'm gonna do that same technique that I did on the overskirt where it's like bias binding basically so I'm gonna encase it um, in the cream colored like a stripe around the edge and then put the pleated trim around the bottom so I just need to like basically make that bias tape and then s when I sew that on it'll hold the the um, horse hair in so I don't really need to worry about that which means no stitches will show although honestly the Victorians showed their stitches all the time and then I just need to um, do the pleated trim for the skirt and put that on um, so I'm gonna start doing that stuff like immediately tonight like I'm gonna cut out what I need for the bias binding and maybe start planning, I'm not sure. Um, and then I just need to do the hat and watch in as a go. So it's all hand stuff. So I'm hoping to get that done this week. I have a couple things to do, like Wednesday, I think I'm busy. I'm not sure what other nights I'm busy, so I have to check that out. But um, I'm going to try to do a bunch of that this week during the evenings because I can sit in my bed and hand sew. Like, I never, I never don't want to do that, but I do not want to come in here and make buttonholes, that's for sure. So... Um, that's all done. So we're gonna do that stuff. Get all that complete. Get the closure on the overskirt. And then we're good to go here. Check out Iron Man. Make sure he's all good to go. Maybe I should just do that right now in case I have to order something. And then those two costumes are good for costume college, which is good because I have like nine days left before I have to leave. I'm going down on Wednesday, um, of costume college even though costume college doesn't start till Thursday I think Thursday Kathy and I are gonna go to the fabric district um, before 
costume college even starts to like go shopping and stuff and then costume college happens and then I come home Monday but before I come home I have to drive down to Long Beach because I have um, an appointment with I forgot what their like Homeland Security I guess um, I have to see if I can get my global re-entry because I really want to have that before my trip so um, they don't have any appointments up in San Francisco anymore and the LAX airport is seems to be closed too so I don't know I made an appointment there and that got cancelled so I made one for Long Beach so Monday I'm gonna go down do my interview hopefully get approved for global re-entry and then drive back up here on Monday evening um, so it's gonna be a very busy weekend uh, but that'll take care of a lot of stuff for me. And then I start the grind on uh, sewing for my trip. So that's going to include hats, wigs, Regency evening dress, that kind of stuff. Um, someone in the comments was like, you seem like you might be experiencing a little bit of burnout. And I'm like, yes, yes, I am. I have been sewing since February, basically like every weekend every, that I like that I'm home, um, and every like evening that I can, I do something in here. So uh, this is not normal <laughs> for me. And also, before I started this, before Philly Things February, I hadn't sewn in five years. Like I hadn't sewn a stitch in five years. So this is kind of insanity for me to like go from zero to like ninety and four seconds so yeah I'm a little burnt out but the fact that these buttonholes are in are actually like oh it's giving me life like I'm rejuvenated from from this so I'm gonna go have a um tiny little ginger ale because those are my rewards for things <laughs> to like thank myself for getting this done and then I'm gonna start making bias tape and thinking about picking stuff out of the sleeves and you know doing all that kind of planning so I'll let you know how that goes as it goes so in a bit of exciting news, today I went over to Lori Tavin's studio. I don't know if you guys know who she is. You should absolutely follow her on Instagram. It's Lori Tavin, T-A-V-A-N, all one word. <sighs> that girl is so sweet. She is such a nice girl and she's so beautiful. And man, her Instagram feed is just something else. I am just like so impressed with her. I went to her studio. It is just a treasure trove of magnificence. Like everything in there is just amazing. Huh, moment. Anyway, she let me play with them for a little while and they were doing a photo shoot so I got to assist a little bit, which was fun. And I had a really good time like learning how the sausage was made on all the pictures that are on her account. But damn, girl, that girl has so much cool stuff. Like just everything in like she just let me like wander around and like pick through stuff and like every single thing I touched was just like I want it. <laughs> so anyway, the reason I was there was to go see Lynn McMasters who made me my new hat and I have it here to show you. But first, I want to show you this beautiful hat box because not only did she make me a hat, she made me a hat box. Like she covered it in the fabric of. Okay, first of all, she printed this fabric like on her inkjet printer um I don't know if I can do this one-handed but I'm gonna try but she made me a hat box so that I can travel with this hat yeah I can't get this off okay I'll be right back isn't this lovely Ugh. and then here is my beautiful hat she was actually there having Lori like like photograph it and Lori was modeling it and oh man did she look good in this hat with her outfit Anyway, so Lori has this fabric, like her dress is actually made out of the real fabric. Um, but Lynn printed the fabric out and lined the hat with it and then made the hat box out of it. But like, let's just take a moment with this hat. So first of all, she <laughs> glued all these little things on. She cut them out. Um, and I think they're, uh, what is that called? It's like a type of grass. Anyway, she cut she she got them dyed and she cut them out and then she went through and made this cording which she then like loop de looped all over the edge and then did all of this like intricate applique with. It is so beautiful. And then she made this. This is just a hat band you can actually take off of the hat. But like check out these flowers. Like she handmade each one of these flowers 
and you can like it's just tied on with this tie so like I can take it off and put a different ribbon on if I if I for some reason don't want these amazing flowers on my head I can just untie it here with this ribbon Ugh, it's so gorgeous like I'm just so impressed with her anyway it's gonna look amazing with my red dress I'm so pleased with it I'm so grateful and then I was like, oh, hey, she was like talking about fans. Like I was handing one to Lori so she could, you know, film. And I'm like, oh, I should, I should make a fan or get a fan to take with me because it would be nice to have that in the photos, but also like, you know, generically just so I can uh, have something to cool me off. And she's like, oh, I brought one for you. This is on loan to you. And she hands me, hang on, I gotta, this fan, which she just like made for me. To take with me and I like I have to give it back to her but like oh my god she just happened to have a fan well I mean she didn't happen to she brought it for me to take with me but like she just made me a fan it's amazing anyway I'm just floored and I'm so grateful and like honored that she would do this for me she wanted to make this anyway she like wanted to try this technique and so she's just like oh well I wanted to do this anyway and I'm just like Lynn <laughs> If I wanted to just do this, I would then keep it and put it on my head all the time. <laughs> so, and the great thing about this is that, like, it matches anything that you have because it's every color, right? Like, ugh. Okay, I'm gonna stop. But man, man. <sighs> okay, I took a wee, like, four hour break. <laughs> I went to dinner with my husband and stuff. Um, I'm going, I made this tape, this bias binding tape. Um, it's not really biased. It's on the straight grain. It's straight grain tape. It's tape. <laughs> um, and I'm going to attach this to the bottom of the hem now. So I'm going to go do that. And that's probably all I'm going to get done tonight because it's pretty late. Uh, but I feel accomplished for today and i um, excited about what got done and how little there is left. <laughs> so yay. I did manage to get the bias onto the bottom of the skirt and then that pressed out a little bit um, so it's ready to get trim uh, well I guess this is trim but it's ready to get pleats attached to it tomorrow so, or the next day or whatever so whenever I, it is that I create those pleats hopefully that'll start at least tomorrow um, it can go onto this trim Hello, it's Monday. Um, normally this is a day that I don't work on stuff, but today I was just like, I'm not even gonna sit down when I get home because then I'm just gonna vegetate. I'm gonna go in there and make some trim. So, <sighs> things I could do. Let's talk about what I could do and then we'll figure out what I did do later. Um, okay, I could make the pleated trim for this skirt, which I might do some of. I could open up all these buttonholes, which I might do. I could apply some of the buttons, which I might do. So I don't actually know what I'm going to work on yet. I think the first thing I'm going to start with is cutting the strips to make the pleated trim. So I need to do, I think, five. I think they make 22 inches and I need 100 inches. So I think I need to make five of them. Um, so I was going to cut those so that they're cut while my table is all clean and stuff. And then I can start pleating them. Yeah, so that's the thing I'm gonna start with and see where I go from there. I might I might not pleat today. I don't I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Don't I sound like confident and like I should totally be making vlogs that other people are paying attention to? <laughs> yeah, I'm just gonna do whatever like my whim is. Um my husband's on his way home and he's bringing food, so I know that I only have a little bit of time before I have to stop. So and I'm not going to stop all night, but I'm going to stop for a while and that might make me vegetate. So I'm going to do what I can right now. So the first thing I'm going to do is cut some fabric and start there because at least I'm not, that's done and I don't have any excuse. So, okay. Okay, updates. I have eaten. I also have five strips cut out. I also have these holes opened up, um, which you could tell if I could get my fingers there. Um, so these are all opened up and ready to go. I think I'm going to start pleating now and see how far I can get. Oh, I also ordered two little tie tacks to tack down here. One is a pipe and one is a deer stalker. 
So I thought that those would be super cute to put here and like hold this down because um, this collar is kind of annoying. So I wanted something to hold it down and I thought what better way to honor, honor my dear friend Holmes. Um, now comes the time in which I'm going to sit here and pick at this forever until I clip all these things off. BT dubs, um, these come off sometimes if you get some really sharp like um, fingernail clippers. You can get these really close. Um, also embroidery scissors work, but fingernail clippers for some reason do it more for me. So, pro tip. Does anybody know what these scissors are? I got given them by a friend of mine. They're like flat, I guess, scissors with this. Does anybody know what these are for? I'm like, I have them in my basket, but honestly I have no idea what to do with them. These are the diggity bomb for cutting off loose threads. I'm like, yes, they really can get in there if you want to. I don't even know what these are either, but I also got given these. And one other pair that are actually embroidered scissors. Let me just show you those. These look amazing. Um, so I'm gonna try all these, but these so far are winners. I like them. Cancel that, new opinion, these are in the wrong hand, but these scissors, yeah. They're tiny, they can get in the hole. Oh, these are so good. I don't even know where I got these. They look like this though. So it's like one o'clock in the morning and I have made five strips. I've made pleating. Maybe it's easier to get closer. <laughs> I have pleated these and made it into one strip, but what I've realized is this is not a hundred inches. It's like uh, slightly less than that because they weren't coming out to quite 20 inches. They were coming out to like 18, 19 inches. So I did cut another strip that um, I'm going to pleat. I'm going to pleat it tomorrow though because I'm getting really tired and it's starting to make my back hurt. So I'm thinking I should just go to bed and go to work tomorrow and come home and pleat that thing up and then I can add it to the pile and then tack it on here. And then, then all the skirt trim will be done. So I actually got a lot done today. I mean, I got those buttons opened. I got the pleating like most of the way to, I got all the pleating I was supposed to get done done. So that was pretty good. Um, yeah, so just need to do a few things on the hat and this bodice. And then we are go for Watson. So excited about that. I guess I should probably find the boots I'm gonna wear with this and then like wear them to work or something because probably not very well broken in. I guess it doesn't really matter. It's just costume college and it's only an hour, but I should try them on and walk around in them a little bit. Okay, with that, I'm gonna go to sleep um, and I'll be back at it tomorrow. I have a massage and possibly a movie on Wednesday, so I don't think I'm gonna so much past like tomorrow. Thursday is my night with my friend Sarah. So that's always off limits unless she's busy. So, um, probably gonna put this vlog up early. 
next week I'm gonna put my vlog up early too because then on Wednesday I leave for costume college and then I'll start daily vlogging so you guys will get vlogs a little bit earlier for the next couple weeks and then after college costume college I gotta hit it right back with a lot of Regency stuff <laughs> so hope it works out hello it's Tuesday and we're sewing now <sighs> I got some weird news today from a friend whose husband passed away, so kind of in a weird mood, but gonna carry on anyway because the best therapy is sewing therapy. It's not really the best therapy, but I need to get this stuff done. Um, okay, so what is on top for today? I need to make one more, I need to make this pleated and then attach it to this pile of pleated stuff. And once I do that, I can put it on this skirt. And this is gonna take a couple hours at least of hand sewing. But if I do all that, I can literally cross off that skirt trim thing over there. And that would make me exceedingly pleased. So guess what we're gonna do today? We're gonna finish that. <laughs> um, the only thing left on the bodice to do is to put on the buttons. So um, that can happen kind of whenever. I'm not like hung up on it or anything. So um, I think that'll be fast and easy, so. I'm calling that bodice pretty much done. I'm not going to cross it off till I have those buttons on, but at the same time. And then the hat trim, I think I need more feathers. So, and I looked through my feather drawer and I don't have any brown feathers, so I feel like I need to go get some. I also need to dig through my ribbon stash, so I'll probably do most of that stuff this weekend. Um, <sighs> this weekend, what do I have to do? Okay, so this week is a little crazy. Tomorrow, I may or may not have plans. My husband may or may not want to go to the movie. I definitely have a massage, so tomorrow will be limited. Thursday is my night with Sarah. I'm definitely going to sew on Friday. And then um, I have tea with my girls on Saturday. And on Sunday, oh, is one of my, um, I guess they're my nieces, one of my nieces' actual birthdays, and they were going to go to Great America. So there's some chance I'll go to Great America for some part of the day, but we'll see. Um, it also depends on how hot it is, so I need to figure that out. Uh, but I have time to do whatever I need to do before costume college and then it's like pack time. I got to pack um, And also time to like Carry on with all the other stuff that I have to do for the other trip. I'm going on so um, No rest for the wicked basically, but I'm really excited about costume college that isn't a week Like I literally have another one week from tomorrow morning. I'm gonna leave To go down to LA so that should be super fun and I'm very excited about it. Um, to see all my friends and a whole bunch of people that I know through here and through Instagram that I've never actually met in person. So if you see me and you're going to costume college, please come up and say hi and tell me what your name is on YouTube or Instagram or wherever I know you from. Um, so that I am like, oh yeah, you. Um, Cause I'm, ugh, there's so many people. I don't know how I'm gonna keep this straight. Anyway, I'm excited to meet all of you. Um, so I'm like super pumped it's all I can think about is going to costume college like my friends are going to comic-con they they're all leaving the tomorrow morning for comic-con and, and this is the first year I am not I'm consciously not going to comic-con um it stopped it kind of stopped being fun for me so um I would rather go to costume college I used to do both but that got rough I'm, I'm too old for that so <laughs> I'm really excited about costume college though so um and for those of you who can't go i am so sad that you can't go but i am gonna take you with me and i'm gonna try to daily vlog i don't know if i'm gonna get a vlog up every single day but i'm gonna certainly try and if i can i will um and they may not be crazy long you know so i know um there's days that i have more activities than other days so i don't know what i'm gonna have to film but we'll see anyway i'm gonna try Okay, I'm gonna stop procrastinating and talking to you and just make the stupid pleated trim and sew it on the thing so that I can get hand stitching. Um, that's gonna be super boring. There's not really anything for you to watch. So <laughs> I might check back in at the end of this and let you know what happened. And we're all good. We got it done. It's like four hours later. This is the trim on the skirt, which is cute and I like it. And that took a lot, a lot, a lot of time. Oh my god. So much time. Um, so we get to do the awesome right now. And come over here. And do this. I haven't done this in a long time. It's been so long. Oh, okay. 
So just need to pop on the buttons for the bodice and then do the hat chip and we're all done with Watson. So I'm super excited about that. Um, so as far as this vlog is concerned, I don't know if I'm going to get to sew tomorrow night. My husband may want to go to a movie and he may also have to work. So I'm not sure I might sew tomorrow night or not. But I think I'm just going to end this vlog here and give it to you guys early. Because I'm also going to give you it early next week. Um, so that I can get ready to go because you're not going to watch me pack the last night. So, And then I'll start a uh, costume college vlog. So um, a lot of people ask for two videos a week. I'm not going to do that on the regular, but I will do it when I can, and so I'll give you this one now. Anyway, uh, if you got here, you know that happened. Like, I don't know why I'm saying this. You just watched 45 minutes of this. Like, obviously that's what went down. <sighs> no well. Okay. Anyway, I'm going to go edit this video and pop it up for you guys so that you have something to watch. And then I will continue on my path. Um, I think the bodice is like... In my mind it's done I just need to do a few things um, but it's not completely done so we're not calling it done um, yeah anyway if you like this video give it a thumbs up subscribe if you haven't done that leave me some comments down below about what you're reading oh I finished Emma and I started Pride and Prejudice I like Pride and Prejudice a lot better than Emma Emma was just like I don't know kind of boring actually it's like wow well, the story is so small, it like, it's so small, <laughs> and it's not, there's no, there's no bad guy, there's no antagonist, at least in Pride and Prejudice, there's kind of a bad guy, maybe-ish, that you think is a bad guy, and the parents are hysterical, and the two sisters, the little sisters, are hysterical, so at least there's something there. I, Emma wasn't my jam. Pride and Prejudice is better. I'm also simultaneously, like, while I'm hand-stitching, watching the BBC Pride and Prejudice with Colin Firth, because yes, I have never seen that. I've only seen the Kira Knightley version, so I'm getting ready for bath by doing all the things, so that should be awesome. Anyway, leave me messages about what you guys are watching, what you're into, what you're listening to, any book recommendations, anything like that. I've gotten so many good ones from you guys in the past couple weeks. And I will see you either tomorrow or on Friday with yet another start to a vlog, um, which will be very exciting because it will be the last one before costume college, and that is very, very exciting. Okay, I'll see you guys later. Have a good one.